Welcome, folks. I'm Jabby Kuwait, joined by Achara Kirk. What's up? We've got the Black Widow pitch meeting from uh, Screen Rant. Thank you, Screen Rant, for allowing us to react to this. Very, very much appreciated. I don't know if anyone's going to watch this reaction, but I really wanted to record my reaction on the off chance that this was a lot of fun uh, because I love pitch meetings. I love Ryan George videos mm -hmm. in general. And uh, Black Widow is an in was an interesting experience all around. Even after the fact of hearing people's responses to the film, I'm like, this is such a fascinating experience because, yeah. you know, coming out of it, I, I enjoyed the movie. I didn't love it. It wasn't my favorite. And I saw problems within it, but I still came away going, there was some cool yeah. stuff in there. I and, liked it. I enjoyed it overall. And with every single review I've been hearing, it's just been getting worse. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, maybe I need to watch this again. I'm like, oh, what's wrong with me? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it, it does force you to ask that question. And I can't wait to hear Ryan George give his take on it. Thank you again, Screen Rant, for allowing us to react to this. You guys, if you could give this an upvote, that would be much appreciated. All right, here we go. So, you have a movie for me? Yes, sir, I do. I was thinking we could do a Black Widow movie. Oh. That's, did you not see Avengers Endgame? I have terrible news. No, I did see that movie actually. <laughs> okay. Yeah, see, I figure we could set the movie a couple of years in the past, you know, when it would have made more sense to make it. Oh yeah, yeah, why did we wait so long to do this? Well, remember that whole leaked email situation with the old Marvel Studios head Ike Perlmutter where he was like, female-led superhero movies don't make money and he listed a bunch of examples. Shh, nope, nope, shh, stop. But then Wonder Woman was a success, so I was asked to take a look at our female character roster again. Stop, stop. Stop talking. Oh, sorry. Are we not saying that out loud? We're, we're going to take that again, okay? <laughs> Why did it take us so long to do this? I don't know. <laughs> oh, fair enough. Better late than never, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So tell me about the wow. movie. Well, I figure we could get more grounded with the Black Widow movie, you know? Oh, we're going to do a more grounded movie about the lady who jumped off a cliff on planet Vormir after a red-faced war criminal who's now a space ghost explained that that was the only way to get her hands on the magic <laughs> rock she wanted before a muscle-bound purple alien got it and completed his power glove. <laughs> Yes. I love it. <laughs> well, great. So I think we can have this whole big marketing campaign where ScarJo is like, you think you know Black Widow? Think again. So we're going to learn a bunch of new stuff about her? Like, how does she get that <laughs> vest that she wears in Infinity War? Oh, people love retroactively learning how characters they know got certain pieces of clothing we've seen them wear. Oh, I certainly hope they do, sir, because we've been really leaning into that for the past five years or so. We have, yeah. We're also going to shed some new light on the character. Like, for example, did you know she went on a little adventure between Civil War and Infinity War? Oh, neat. Yeah, so it turns out when Natasha was a kid, she had, like, a fake family in Ohio, but they were actually Russian operatives living undercover. Okay. And then we're gonna jump forward in time and Natasha's on the run from General Ross because of the Sokovia Accords. He's from some of the other movies. <laughs> he is. It's all connected. <laughs> wow, 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 wow. So she heads to the safe house in Norway and unknowingly picks up a little box of vials of antidote. An antidote? Yeah, see, it turns out her fake sister Yelena was also a widow operative being chemically controlled by this place called the Red Room, right? Right. And she ended up coming in contact with this stuff called the Red Dust, which freed her from her mind control agent. Ah, gotcha. So Natasha's unknowingly driving with this stuff and suddenly a massive explosive hits her car and flips it a bunch of times. Oh my god, is she okay? Yeah, I mean she's a superhero, right? Yeah, but that sounds like something that would probably kill a non-superpowered being and Natasha doesn't have superpowers. That's right. Uh, yeah, whoops. Whoops. <laughs> okay, so to be honest okay, so real quick, I mean that that did cross my mind a handful of times while watching the movie. But you know what? Like, Natasha's gone through so much already. Like, uh, that question, I've stopped asking that question. Ever since the first time I asked that question, I was like, wait, but she she doesn't have... Never mind. Right. That's just how she rolls, you yeah. know? <laughs> I guess. But I mean, I'm like, during that accident, I'm like, not a bruise, nothing. Like, she's fine. Yeah, she's and just And then fine. when she, like, there's another scene where she, like, leaps off, like, falls off of a building and just lands like a cat. I'm like... Okay. That's a superpower. You know, out of a helicopter, same thing. I'm like, damn. She doesn't die unless she jumps off a cliff. She's just like, she's drinking that milk, you know? His bones are strong. It's strong. Oh, and I, I, I love how he says Natasha. I know. <laughs> I'm like, it's Natasha. Right. He says it like someone from the Bo yeah. Natasha. <laughs> Natasha. Or, or from, uh, 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 like someone from Boston. Natasha. <laughs> <laughs> Superpowers. Oh, uh, yeah. Whoops. Whoopsie. Okay, so to be honest, now that I think of it, there are several scenes in this movie where, as a non superpowered individual, she should definitely like that one. be yes, yeah. exactly. but she's not gonna. It would be better story wise if she didn't die. Yeah, because we already know when she dies. Anyway, yeah. so then she's gonna get attacked by this villain called Taskmaster. Oh, people love that character. Very cool mimicking capabilities, entertaining personality. Yeah, so I figure we could do like a Deadpool kind of thing. Yeah, bring a character that people love to the big screen. And 
an enjoyable way, sure. Uh, no, I meant like a Deadpool in X-Men Origins Wolverine kind of thing. Oh, turn the character into a mind-controlled killing machine with no speaking lines or personality traits. Yeah, that works too. Great. So then what happens? Well, Natasha escapes with the vials and goes to see her fake sister, and they start fighting when they see each other. Why? Because it's been a couple of minutes since the last action scene. Gotcha. And so Natasha finds out that this bad Russian guy, Drakov, who mm -hmm. she thought she killed years ago, is actually still alive and still running the Red Room. Okay. And by the way, I was thinking we could get Ray Winstone to play him. Oh, he's great. Can he do a Russian accent? <laughs> Doesn't matter. It matters <laughs> a little. Nope. So then they realize... That's exactly That's what I so said. That's true, yeah. That's exactly what I said. I'm like, Ray Winston's great as Ray he's Winston. awesome, yeah. As Ray Winston, he's awesome. Great. Why are you giving this guy the role of having a Russian accent? It sounds horrible. It just sounds like Cockney Broken or something. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, he's great. Can he do a Russian accent? Doesn't matter. It matters a little. Nope. So then they realize they need to break their fake father, Alexei, out of jail because he probably knows where the Red Room is. All right. So then these guards fire hundreds of bullets at Yelena, who's in a helicopter, and Natasha jumps down to help her dad. Very exciting. So then they all manage to fly away just as an avalanche is just destroying the prison. <laughs> well, well, thank God the hundreds <laughs> of bullets didn't affect the helicopter in any way. Yeah, it worked out great. So I guess a bunch of people are probably killed in that avalanche, huh? Were they all bad guys? Uh, yeah. You sure? I'm sure some of those guards were just people working there to try to feed their families. Uh, sir, we're on to the next scene, so don't worry about that. Oh, okay. So it turns out Alexi doesn't mm. actually know where the Red Room is, so they have to go see their fake mother, Melina. Okay, sure. And it turns out she's still working for the Red Room, but then her and Natasha have a heart-to-heart, -heart, and that seems to change everything for her. So what do they do? Oh, well, they secretly use those face mask things to swap appearances. Well, why do they switch appearances? Well, because this way Natasha can get close to Drakov. Does that work? Now, he sees right through the disguise and pulls the mask off pretty much immediately. Right, so why do they swap faces? <laughs> well, because Melina's the one who designed the cells in the Red Room, so she's able to open them up. Do you think maybe it might have been easier to just explain to Natasha how to open the cell <laughs> instead of having her impersonate God a woman? God damn it. <laughs> Did your brain just break? Sometimes he does that, and I'm like, oh, fuck, that's right. Like, it's so obvious now. Like, why wouldn't they have... Yeah. I mean, then you lose that visual effect, I guess. Of like, oh, like, oh my God, well, the reveal. Like, oh, wow, I mean, it's so complicated. Yeah. It didn't need to be. You could have just said... So when you go inside the cell, what you want to do is open the panel and then press those two buttons. Right. And then after three seconds, press the other one. Right. Cool, you got it? Great. But it was also a, a reveal for the audience. The audience didn't know. Yeah. I mean, I didn't. Yeah, no, I didn't. I thought that was a fun That was a fun yeah. moment. But also, we watched the new Rockstars breakdown earlier today, and he was saying that Melina was essentially trying to control everything in a particular way so as to redirect all control towards herself or something like that. Like that she, was a like theory. Like she's pulling the yeah. puppet strings potentially. Yeah. So. Maybe it might have been easier to just explain to Natasha how to open the cell instead of having her impersonate a woman she hasn't seen in several decades. Maybe. But so now Natasha has to go up against Dracoff and Taskmaster, who we're gonna reveal is Drakov's daughter. Oh. Okay. No, see, this is kind of a big deal because Natasha always assumed she killed her when she was a little girl as kind of intentional collateral damage when killing Drakov. Natasha intentionally killed a child? Oh, well, the child didn't really die, so morally we're all good. Yeah. Well, so then we're going to flash back to Melina <laughs> explaining to Natasha that you can't actually hurt Drakov. Why? Because he implemented a pheromone blocker in all the widows, so if you can smell him, you can't hurt him. What? It's basic <laughs> science, sir. If you can smell him, you can't fire a gun at him. Is that basic science? It it is, yeah, because that's why I wrote that in here. So Natasha has to hold her breath? No, because see, Melina explains that's not enough. You gotta sever a nerve right here. Couldn't she just kind of stand on the other side of the room far away from him, fire a gun from there? Nope. But probably, though. Pheromones. Oh, very far-reaching pheromones. <laughs> so it's gonna be tough for her to hurt him, huh? <laughs> Actually, it's gonna be super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Oh, really? Yeah, see, she smashes her face on a table, and that severs the nerve. Oh, surgical head smashing is tight. <laughs> but so then Drakov manages to bring in all the brainwashed widows and they start attacking Natasha. Oh no. But then Yelena uses the antidote on all of them and all their free will comes back. Oh, very nice of her. And Melina <laughs> blows up a main engine of the Red Room sky base so the whole thing starts to fall. Uh-oh. Yeah, and then Yelena blows up the plane that Drakov was trying to escape on. And she was able to do that despite the pheromones? Sure, and so then Black Widow dives oh, after yeah. her as she plumb- Well, who- the- it was he indirect. Was it's was... indirect. It's indirect. She wasn't like actually trying to like physically hurt him. Her mission was to just explode the thing. He was just collateral damage. So that's fine, right? 
Yeah, that's right. I did not think about that. Well, it's, I, I'm just thinking like, you know, it's outside like, you know. Yeah, yeah. Like coronavirus is like. Oh, yeah. You know, it's like the it's, sunlight. It's the pheromone load. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because you're outdoors and the sunlight's killing all the germs and everything. Yeah, 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 yeah. Something. Of course, science. Like maybe she couldn't smell them from up there. You know, the wind's just blowing it. It's like. Oh, yeah, maybe the wind was blowing in the other direction. Exactly. Yeah, it's, it's, okay. Hey, come yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're overthinking yeah, yeah. a pitch meeting. <laughs> no, but uh, absolutely right. And Yelena blows up the plane that Drakoff was trying to escape on, and she was able to do that despite the pheromones? Sure, and so then Black Widow dives after her as she plummets towards Earth, but Taskmaster starts attacking again. And not one piece of the massive, actively crumbling sky mm -hmm. base lands on them. That's what we're I going with. That's yeah. They land, but Natasha manages to use the antidote on Taskmaster, and so everything's great now. So nobody died in the massive collapse? Yeah, just every single one of the bad characters and not a single one of the good or redeemed characters. Oh, well, great. So then instead of escaping with her family, Natasha decides to stay behind and be captured by General Ross. Oh, yeah, she can't go with her family. She's got to be in a couple of other movies. So then two weeks later, she meets up with her friend who got her a Quinjet. Wait, wasn't she just captured by Ross? What happened there? I yeah. don't know. Oh, fair enough. And then during the credits, we're going to have this scene where Yelena is at Natasha's grave. And this My mom was asking me about that earlier tonight. She's yeah. like, what happened with Natasha? <laughs> <laughs> when she got taken. Yeah, like, why, why, how did she get out of, you know, she must have been arrested. How'd she get out uh, yeah, of jail? Yeah, I, I like, looked at my mom and I'm like, who are you, Ryan George? I don't know. <laughs> Leave me alone. Stop <laughs> asking questions. God like, damn it. they didn't care enough to write that into the story. Why should we care? Yes. Yeah, oh my God. Whatever, moving forward. <laughs> No. Oh, fair enough. And then during the credits, we're going to have this scene where Yelena is at Natasha's grave and this character, Contessa Valentina, shows up with a mission for her. What's the mission? Sign up for Disney Plus. Very <laughs> exciting. Yeah, it's going to be very <laughs> exciting. People are going to be like, who is this character? It's going to be this big reveal. Oh, that's going to be a big reveal. Really add a lot to the end credits, unless we decide to reveal it in a streaming show first. What? Yeah. We knew that, like... Yeah, I mean, everything's just sort of falling out of order because of the pandemic. The virus that must not be named, but yeah. we're okay to name it now. You know what I thought was a little strange in the film? Unless I'm misunderstanding something completely with physics or what was used. When, what uh, Natasha or um, Pew Pew used... Yelena. What's her, what's Florence her? Florence Pew. Pew. That's just how I, sh I remember her now as Pew Pew. Whatever she used to explode the vials in the room. Uh-huh. Wasn't it a grenade? I don't remember actually, but yeah, it sounds about right. So how does that work? Like you're throwing, you're, you're detonating a grenade over everybody, and it just and no one gets hurt. Yeah, no one's by got shrapnel like, or glass anything. shards. Nothing, just, like everything. Yeah, it, that's, it was just a little bit like, you know, the movie got a bit fast and furiously for me at a certain point. A little bit. And so, I, and I, I said that, you know, early on. It's just it's, I started looking for Vin Diesel because it just got to be a lot. Okay, so the nose breaking thing is the is the big thing I want to ask you about because when I saw that in the film, I'm like, huh? Like she just smashes her face into the table and she, now she can't smell anything. Is that how that works? Yeah, I, honestly, I, I did think it like, was a little bit weird. Like, where, my where, brain... did they, where did they train you to do that? Look, w when you're Black Widow. You know a lot of things. Fighting is just, you know, one part of the knowledge that you get. A knowledge of anatomy, <laughs> physiology, how bodies work. Is that in the nerves. Ray Winston? Is that in the Ray Winston low rent Russian accent menu, like or, or a manual? It's like page seventy two. How to like stop yourself from being able to smell anything in case that you know comes up. Well, like if you if you know anatomy and, and you know all that stuff, I then guess. maybe you're like, okay, well, I all I need to do is sever my olfactory nerve. But here's the question. I mean, I I don't know that stuff. But like, if you sever a nerve, I know that if you break a bone, right, you can fix it. Like you can fix the bone of your nose can you fix your nerves i don't think so yeah i don't know so I, if you I think severed it's... your olfactory nerve is she just like she can't smell anything she can't now. smell and taste no, she's anything constant, anymore now she's constantly thinking she's got the she's COVID. got the covid <laughs> yeah like what's no, but, going on no but okay so i just feel like there's a spoof waiting for like marvel on that front like there's got to be a, a spoof somewhere like on saturday night live where she tries to sever the nerve and she's like i i can't Let's do it again, and she just tries to smash her face again because she can't hit Ray Winston yet. Yeah, you know, it's like let's just keep trying, and then she just knocks herself out. Yeah, 
Maybe. I don't know. You know the thing. The thing that. It's a reason I don't write for Saturday Night Live. <laughs> <laughs> the thing that kind of was really surprising to me was in the beginning. I loved that bit where he was all like, "Oh, is it because of that email from that old exec or whatever who was like, oh, female-led superhero movies won't be successful?" And then, and then, meanwhile, <laughs> the producer guys just like. We don't talk about it, and then he just like retakes the scene again. I thought that was my favorite bit in 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 the whole no, thing. It's just surprising to me that that would be said, that would that would be uttered at all, that someone would think that. It's like, are you kidding me? This is a an established character. Like it's Marvel. Like you know, people would go. I don't know. Maybe I I'm. I no, I, I don't. I, well, I agree with you a hundred percent. But I always felt that Black Widow was always sidelined like her and Hawkeye I just feel like a lot of the time in the movies we're always focused on Captain America on Iron Man you know on the Hulk or Ant-Man or whoever and then Black Widow is awesome La Femme Nikita was so successful they keep remaking the damn movie like why wouldn't Black Widow in Black Widow is essentially is basically La, La Femme Nikita yeah like yeah. why wouldn't that be successful that's so strange to me that someone could even think that and so, Stupid, that's what. Anyway, it, it, anyway, yeah. So I, I enjoyed the heck out of this. He called out all the things that I thought were really silly, and then some on top of that. He was pointing out other things that I w almost wish I didn't. <laughs> you know, like c coming into this, like we were not familiar with the character of Taskmaster at all, but. You know, when he kind of explained what the character was like, you know, like he was, he's someone who can mimic people and their movements and he's got a really cool personality and, and all that. I can understand why people would be pissed. I understand that feeling of being someone who, you know, reads lots of books or whatever. Like I love fantasy. So if I read a book and then I go watch the movie and they change one of my favorite characters, I'm mad because I'm like, yeah. that's not the person that I wanted. And like, You've made you've made them completely different. This this person's basically a brain dead robot, you know. Right. And so I understand why why that's upsetting. But going into it, I didn't have any context for that. So I was just like, Yeah, you weren't. Oh. Yeah, you weren't anticipating anything in particular. Yeah, I was just like, Oh, okay, cool. I yeah. guess that's fine. Yeah, I, I get it. I understand why people would be upset. When you when you hear the kind of character it is, it's it's like how do you distinguish that from Deadpool though? Because you have Deadpool. I mean, I, unless it's just a character um. that doesn't break the fourth wall, and that, and you know, and he is a villain. And he's not a and Deadpool. While an anti-hero is still a hero. Yeah, I get why people would be upset. But because I had nothing invested in that, I had no dog in that fight. Yeah, exactly. It didn't bother me as yeah. much. So, but I can see why it's controversial, and and shocking for a lot of people in in a bad way. But uh, yeah, I mean. I liked what they did with Taskmaster. They, I, I thought that, as I mentioned in the in the new Rockstars video, I thought it was like the Terminator. You know, I thought they actually did right. a good job with it. Maybe they'll try to find a way to bring in the actual Taskmaster at some point. You know, with the personality and all that. Who knows? So, you guys, thanks so much for hanging out with us. Hopefully you enjoyed that. Thank you again to Screen Rant for allowing us to react to this. And y'all, if you haven't already, please subscribe. Hit that bell icon. All notifications. Give this video an upvote if you could be so kind. I'm Jabby Koi. This is... Achara Kirk. Peace out.